सो हाई एवरी वन माई नेम इज शिवम बोहरा आई एम अ थर्ड ईयर कंप्यूटर साइंस इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम देहरादून आई लव सॉल्विंग प्रॉब्लम एंड आई ऑल्सो लव टू टीच वेलकम टू आवर चैनल लर्न कंपेटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग विद कोड शेयर सो इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन कंपेटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग एंड वॉन्ट टू लर्न इन मास्टर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड एलगोरिदम्स देन दिस इज अ वन स्टॉप डेस्टिनेशन फॉर यू हेयर वी पोस्ट वीकली प्रॉब्लम एक्सप्लेनेशन conceptual videos on various programming paradigms and also conduct live problem solving sessions so before we actually get started here's a reminder for you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already yet so in this video we'll have a very basic introduction about loops and by basic introduction i mean we'll only see the conceptual part and not the programming part about loops right so let's begin so let us first understand what a loop is through this beautiful example of staircase so let's say we have some staircase and initially i am over here right and i have to walk up the stairs and i have to reach at this point let's call it a so i have to walk up the stairs and i have to reach at a so initially the number of steps that i have taken let's say it is 0 so initially let's say the number of steps that i have taken is 0 so then i'll take my first step then second step and then three more steps to reach my destination which is a in this case so here we can see that i'm taking a single step at a time i'm taking a single step at a time and i'm taking a step again and again till we have or till i haven't reached a so here in this case i'm taking a single step again and again till i haven't reached a so coming back to loops a loop is a set of instruction repeating again and again under a given condition i repeat it's a set of instructions repeating itself again and again under a given condition so here we can compare that set of instructions with a single step right because here we are repeating a single step again and again and in loops a set of instruction is repeating itself again and again right so here that set of instruction is a single step in this case but in loops there is also a condition so let's see what is the condition in this case now we know that we are repeating a step again and again but we have to stop when we reach a so here in this case that condition is till we haven't reached a we can take a single step or that that condition is till we haven't reached a right so a loop basically consists of three parts which are initialization base condition and updation right so we can, we can see that initially the number of steps that i have taken is zero so i'll write this under the initialization part so in the initialization part i'll write steps is equals to 0 and we can also see that we are taking a single step at a time and we are taking a step again and again right so under the updation part i'll write take a step which indirectly increments steps by 1 that is if initially the number of steps were 0 then if i take a single step then now it will become 1 then if then if i take another step then now it will become 2 then 3 then 4 and then finally it will become 5 right so so after the updation part or before the updation part we have this some this thing called base condition right now we need a condition in this loop to stop because we really don't want to keep on taking a step again and again we have to stop at this point a so for that we need a base condition so what would be the base condition for this case it would be steps should be less than 5 now let's see how this or this loop which has these three components actually work so we have seen that firstly we have the initialization part so in that part i'll write steps should be zero or i'll or i'll initialize steps by zero then i'll check the base condition so after the initialization i'll check the base condition so my condition is steps should be less than 5 now initially steps are zero 
सो जीरो इज लेस देन फाइव हिंस दिस कंडीशन इज ट्रू एज ऑफ नाउ ऑफ दिस और एट दिस मोमेंट दिस दिस कंडीशन इज ट्रू सो आई गो टू द अपडेशन पार्ट सो इन द अपडेशन पार्ट वी हैव रिटर्न टेक अ स्टेप और इंक्रीमेंट स्टेप्स बाय वन सो इफ स्टेप्स पर जीरो देन आई इंक्रीमेंट इट बाय वन सो नाउ स्टेप्स विल बिकम वन राइट आई हैव इंक्रीमेंटेड स्टेप्स फ्रॉम जीरो टू वन then again i'll go back from update again again i'll go back from updation to base condition so again i'll check this condition right so steps are one so i'll check whether one is less than 5 or not so one is less than 5 this condition is again true so again i'll go back to the updation part so again i'll update the value of steps so again i'll change the or i'll increment the value of steps from 1 to 2 then again i'll go back and check my base condition base condition is steps should be less than 5 steps are 2 so is 2 less than 5 the answer is yes true so again i'll go back and update the value of of steps so now steps will become 3 then it will become 4 right then it will become 5 as soon as it will become 5 then i'll check the base condition so here the base condition is steps should be less than 5 but steps are 5 so is 5 less than 5 the answer is false hence we will stop at this point hence we can see that we have taken five steps and we have reached at this point so basically this is how a loop actually works and we'll understand loops more clearly when we will see the implementation of loops using flow charts so now let's understand loops using flow charts so let's say we have to print the number 3 5 times as shown over here right so here we can see that we have printed 3 1 2 3 4 5 times right so in loops we know that we have three components which are initialization base condition and updation right so here what i'll do is i'll first perform the initialization part so firstly we know that we have to print the number 3 5 times so i'll count from 1 and i'll end at 5 i'll start counting from 1 so i'll initialize a variable i by 1 right then i have to count till 5 so i'll go till 5 so my condition is i should be less than or equal to 5 right then within the loop firstly we have to print this number 3 so firstly i'll print it so if my condition is true so firstly i'll print the number 3 then i'll update the value of i so if i was 1 then now it should become 2 right so for that i'll update the value of i and for that i'll use i equals to i plus 1 right so then after this i'll simply go back and if my condition is false then i'll simply stop now let's see how this loop actually works so initially the value of i is 1 right so firstly i'll initialize i equals to 1 then i'll check this condition whether i is less than or equals to 5 or not i is 1 it is less than 5 hence this condition is true so we'll go to the yes part so within this loop i'll simply print 3 so i'll print 3 right then i'll update the value of i or i'll simply increment the value of i by 1 so if i was i was 1 then now it will become 2 right then again it will go back and then again we will check whether i is less than or equal to 5 or not i is 2 2 is less than 5 hence this condition is true so again we will go to the yes part then again we will print 3 so again i'll print 3 again i'll update the value of i so now i will become 3 so again we will go back this condition is true because i is less than 5 so again we will print 3 again i'll increment the value of i now i will become 4 again i'll check the condition whether i is less than 5 4 is less than 5 so this is true so again we will print 3 again i'll increment the value of i 
So now I will become 5. Again, I'll go back. Again, I'll check whether i is less than or equal to 5 or not. i is 5. Now, uh, 5 is equals to 5. And so, we'll, we'll simply move to the yes part. Here, we, we are seeing that i should be less than or equals to 5. So, this condition basically works like this. That is, if i is less than 5 or i is equals to equals to 5. If any of these two conditions are true, then it will simply go to the true part or yes part. And if any of or, or if or both of these two are false, then only it will go to the false part. If both of these two are false, right? So here we can see that this condition is true. So we will go to the yes part. So i is 5, 5 is equal to 5. So we'll go to the yes part. So again, we will print 3. Again, we will increment the value of i so now i will become 6 again we will go back and we will check this condition is 6 less than or equals to 5 is 6 less than 5 no it is not less than 5 is 6 equals to 5 no it is not equals to 5 hence both of them are false so we will go to the no part right so we will go to the no part so we will go to the no, no part and we will simply stop this program right so here we can see that we have printed successfully three one two three four five times right so this is basically how a loop actually works okay so another interesting thing is that here we can see that we are starting from one and we are going till five so if we count these numbers we have a total of five numbers over here Right. So this means that this loop will run five times. Right. Now, if I would have started from two and I would have ended at six, then also we have a total of five numbers. Because two, three, four, five, you can see that we have one, two, three, four and five numbers. Then also we have five numbers. So if I would have started from 2 and if my condition was i is less than and equals to 6 then also this loop would have run 5 times and then then also we would have printed 3 5 times right. So instead of starting from 1 to 5 we can also use from 2 to 6 and we can use any range that has a difference of 4. We can see that here also we have a difference of 4. So we can start with any range which has a difference of 4 to print 5 times. Right. Now, let's say if first, first let me erase this. So, so my loop starts from 1 and ends at 5. Now, let's say if I would have written print i instead of print 3, then in that case, we know that i is initially 1, right? i is initially 1. So I'll check this statement. This is initially true. So I'll simply print the value of i. i is initially 1. So I'll print 1. Then I'll update the value of i. Then it will become 2. So then I'll print. Then I'll again check the condition and then I'll pr again print 2. Then again I'll, again I'll increment the value of i. So now i will become 3. Then again I'll print 3 then 4 then i'll print 4 then it will become 5 then i'll print 5 then it will become 6 and then we will simply go to the no part so instead of 3 if i would have written i then in that case it would have printed first five numbers or first five natural numbers right so we started from 1 we ended at 5 and we've simply printed i then in that case we have printed 1 2 3 4 5 right so moving on to the next question we have to print the first 50 natural numbers and i have given the hint for this question so i want you to draw a flow chart for this particular question on your own and then simply come back and check whether your solution was correct or not so the solution is very simple Firstly, I'll initialize i equals to 1 since we have to start with 1. Then we have to go up till 50. So i should be less than or equals to 50. 
then we have to simply print the value of i then we have to update the value of i and then we can simply go back if this condition is false then we can simply stop right so this way it will print one two three and so on till 50 so this will print the first 50 natural numbers right now here's another example and here i want you to try to solve this problem on your own here the problem says print the first 50 natural numbers in reverse as shown over here right so pause this video and try to solve this problem on your own so again the solution for this problem is very simple firstly what i'll do is i know that i have to start from 50 so i'll initialize i equals to 50 and then i have to go till 1 so i'll check if i is greater than or equals to 1 or not right and then if this condition is true we'll simply print the value of i and then we will update the value of i now instead of increasing this time we have to decrease the value by one so this time i equals to i minus one so if it was 50 initially then it will become 49 then 48 and so on right then i have to go back and then i can simply stop right so here's another example print the sum of first 50 natural numbers right so we'll start from 1 and we'll end at 50 so i would be initialized from 1 and i should be less than or equals to 50 this would be the initialization part and this would be the condition part right so i'll initialize i by 1 and i'll check if i is less than or equals to 50 or not right then we'll do some calculations then we'll update the value of i then we'll go back and if this condition is false we'll print sum and stop let's see how this uh, loop actually works so initially the value of i is 1 and the value of sum is 0 right now it will check this condition this condition is true 1 is less than 50 hence it will update the value of sum sum equals to sum plus i now sum initially is 0 i initially is 1 so 0 plus 1 is 1 so the value of sum would be updated from 0 to 1 right now we can update the value of i now i is i plus 1 which is 2 right so again it will go back it will check this condition i less than equals to 50 i is 2 less than 50 i is less than 50 which is true so again i'll update the value of i now this time sum equals to sum plus i now this time sum is 1 and the value of i is 2 so this time the value of sum is 1 plus 2 so now the sum, sum is 3 right or let me write it as 1 plus 2 so again i'll increment the value of i now the value of i would be changed from 2 to 3 <clears throat> again it will go back and again it will check whether i is less than or equal to 50 or not i is 3 this condition is again true so again <clears throat> it will update the value of sum so now this time sum is 3 and the value of i is <clears throat> 3 so this time the value of sum would be sum plus i sum is 3 plus i is 3 so this time it would be 3 plus 3 this could be written as 1 plus 2 plus 3 because this previous 3 is nothing but 1 plus 2 right <clears throat> and so on so <clears throat> when the value of i is 50 this sum would store 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on till 50 right this would be the content of this sum variable now at this moment i is 50 so i'll increment the value of i now i is 51 it will again go back this time this condition is false so it will go to the no part and it will print the sum it will print this particular value and then it will simply stop the program <clears throat> so 
This is how we will find the sum of first 50 natural numbers using a loop.